Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Ulladu Narpadu. So this time, we're going to read a verse that I consider to be the topmost. See thus, the dyads, such as the duality of subject and object, and the triads, such as the triple of seer, sight, and seen, which are unreal appearances like the blueness of the sky, exist by always clinging to the one. The ego, or mind, the thought, I am the body. If one looks within the mind for that one, by inquiring, who am I? The dyads and triads will slip off. Since their base, the ego, will be found to be non-existent, they will disappear. Only those who have thus seen the non-existence of the ego and its products, the dyads and triads, are those who have seen the truth, the real self, which is the source and absolute base upon which the unreal ego seems to exist. After seeing thus, they will not be perturbed by the unreal appearances of the dyads and triads, because in their outlook, those dyads and triads will be non-existent. So, <laughs> A lot of people read non-dual philosophy and because they don't want to accept the consequences, they make some compromise misunderstanding. But if one is willing to go all the way, then one reaches the top of the mountain. What is that? Well, let's go back to the beginning. Dyads and triads. We have talked in these series, going back five years or more, about uh, the duality, uh, the sets of complementaries, up and down, in and out, good, bad, right, wrong, black, white, etc and the triads or triples, which are necessary for real being. The dyads are only abstract. The triads are actual descriptions of something that exists. But of course, all of them are simply abstractions, <laughs> simply words, symbols. And those are arbitrary. We create them. They're not real. And this is the mind. This is thought. So when we see this, we have to ask ourselves, well then, who am I? Or well, what am I? Well, where does this thought, I, come from? See, like I said, this is the top of the mountain. Huh? In the beginning, climbing the mountain, you can walk on two feet. That's the dyads. <laughs> then, as you get higher up, you need a walking stick. That's the triads. <laughs> but eventually, as you near the summit, and it gets steeper and steeper, you have to crawl on all fours and you finally get to the top and you can sit. No more need for dyad, triad, or whatever. Just the one. Now what is this one? Let's look at that. The one is basically also a thought. The ego, the I, what we think of as the self. It's not really the self, because it also depends on something else. 
What is that? The real self, self with a capital S. Brahman, pure consciousness. And that is the reality. Consciousness without an object. Consciousness that is pure ecstasy. So when we get to that stage, the dyads and triads disappear. They slip off, as the, as the shloka says. They can't stick. Huh? They can't cling anymore to the I, because the I is also seen to be an illusion. It's a very fascinating illusion, and one that we create many times a second by adding this overlay of I and mind to our perceptions, our impressions. Nevertheless, it is an illusion. It's a conception. A conception is something that didn't exist before. And then it comes into existence. Isn't it? So concepts are those things which are conceived, which are brought into existence that don't exist prior. So anything that has a beginning also has an end. All these concepts, all these projections, all are imagination. Now, I suppose if we are content to live in a world of imagination, that's fine. But we find it's hollow. And we also find it's temporary. The ego, the mind, the thoughts, the dyads and triads, all these constructions based on the concept of I are all temporary and unsatisfactory. And they're actually not self. This is the Buddha taught. The real self is simply the pure awareness in which they arise and pass away. We are trying to reach that real self. We are trying to become or to be, to realize that real self. But as Ramana says, what is the necessity of realization? We are already the self. Brahman is already everything and everyone, including ourselves. So the only process, the only effort is to see this. And once we have seen, then from that point on, our view changes. From that point, we are sitting on the top of the mountain. The dyads and triads are there scurrying around on the face of the mountain, but they can't reach us. They have no access to that level. So, all concepts are basically false. That means all experiences are also false. And that means all the objects which are experienced are false. The whole world is simply Maya. <laughs> Everything we experience. So this philosophy is actually very simple. I'm making so many videos and talking so much, huh? But it's actually a very, very simple, basic philosophy. And Shankaracharya expressed the whole thing in three lines. Brahma Satyam. Brahman is truth. Brahman is ever-existent. Brahman is pure consciousness, pure being. Satchit Ananda, being, consciousness, bliss. And the second line, Jagan Mitya. The whole world is an illusion. <laughs> Everything you can experience is false. Only the experiencer 
is real. And finally, Jivo Brahmai Vanaparaha, that the individual self is essentially non-different from Brahman. But what does that mean? We are Brahman, reflected in a tiny little mind and body. Just like the sunlight reflected in the puddle in the footprint of a calf. It's the same sunlight, the same brilliance. Even the same image is there of the sun. Huh? But because it's reflection, it's not real. Only the source is real. Only the sun is real. So let's turn this all around and now look from the point of view of Brahman. From the point of view of Brahman, all is illusion, including the reflections. Actually, there is nothing but Brahman. So this is the very simple philosophy. Uh, three lines. And once we put this philosophy into practice, we find we're full of bliss. Sat, chit, ananda. Because Brahman is bliss. So this is the top of the mountain. It, it doesn't get any better than this. But, as I said, there are consequences. It means we have to give up the whole game of ego and mind and thoughts and fancy words and symbols, concepts, ideas, philosophies, blah, 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 blah. Yes, this simple philosophy does have deep consequences. And those consequences can be explained elaborately, and they are. Read the uh, read the Upanishads. There are plenty of uh, free files on the internet of the different Upanishads, especially the Mundak Upanishad and the Manduk Upanishad. Isha Upanishad is also good but it's a little harder to understand. They describe this philosophy very, very simply, but a little more elaborately than we do here. That once you realize yourself, you are, for all practical purposes, identical with Brahman. Now, don't mistake this to be that I am God. Huh? That's totally wrong. Totally wrong. Because in realizing Brahman, the ego is lost. There is no I to be God. On that level, there is no individual self. So don't deceive yourselves like many do. Only they, ju they just want to justify their entitlement. Uh, I can do anything, I can say anything, I can have or be anything I want. No, <laughs> that's childish. That's like a spoiled two-year-old throwing a tantrum to get some favorite toy. Don't fall for it. A lot of people take psychedelics and then they delude themselves into thinking that they have become enlightened or that they have become God or something like this. It's not so. When one actually realizes the Supreme, all desires evaporate. He is not willful. He doesn't start anything. He basically does nothing and allows life to come to him, sitting on the top of the mountain. Om Tatsa.
ओंग हरि ही ओंग